And we're on top of some late breaking news tonight. A man's body found inside a walk in beer cooler at SunTrust Park. All this while fans were flocking to tonight's game against the Reds. Ryan Kruger's in Cobb County. Ryan, how are fans responding to this tonight? Yeah, a lot of shock, a lot of confusion, Vinny. Uh, most of them had no idea this had happened until we started speaking with them. In fact, I talked to one woman. She said this was her first trip to SunTrust Park, and she's actually thankful she didn't know about this while she was here. She didn't find out until after the game. Now, we are told that the victim in this case is a third-party contractor. He was working the overnight shift whenever he apparently passed away inside that beer cooler. Uh, but here's the problem, though. He was not discovered until 3 o'clock this afternoon afternoon when one of his co-workers was starting up setting up for the game they went inside that beer cooler and found the man's body so we're talking from the overnight shift to three o'clock in the afternoon that's a big time frame that investigators are trying to pin down at this point in time they do not know how the man died medical examiner is still trying to figure that out fans tonight shocked they had no idea what had happened they actually found a man's body in the walk-in cooler before the game here yeah did you heard about that at no all? no no, sorry, nope. Yeah, kind of shocking though. Uh, very much so, yeah. It's still an ongoing investigation because we don't have a, a time of death, cause of death, anything like that. We don't put a label on it. So we treat it as if it's a homicide and then go down from there. But we have not labeled it as a homicide. Now, police are also uh, looking at surveillance video. Obviously, there are a lot of cameras inside SunTrust Park. They're also talking to co-workers, try to pin down how and when that man passed away. Vinny? Unbelievable. Thanks so much, Ryan. We'll stay on top of the story here and on 11alive.com. Hey, take a look at this video our crew sent us from SunTrust Park. And Ryan is lightning strike after strike blazing across the sky. Meteorologist Samantha Moore is tracking where this thunderstorm is heading and how long it could last. Sam. Well, it is moving slowly to the southeast tonight, Vinny. And you can see all the lightning here. It's just been an incredible light show as this came across the Tennessee Valley and moved into North Georgia starting about uh, two hours ago now. And you can see how we had this lightning stretching from northwest Georgia into uh, Cherokee County, over into Ball Ground, into uh, North Fulton County, Alpharetta, into Big Creek. Starting to wane there a little bit, less lightning than we had just about 15 minutes ago, but still a lot of lightning here over Winder, over towards Athens, Jefferson, in towards Watkinsville. And we're going to continue to see this move slowly to the southeast. So really millions of people being affected by all of this lightning here tonight. And we queried it just the last 15 minutes, 237 strikes in the last 15 minutes alone. And the National Weather Service put out an advisory, lots of cloud, cloud to ground lightning, winds gusting to 40 miles per hour. Watch for ponding on the roadways and pea-sized hail coming up in weather. We'll talk about the timing for tomorrow. We could see another strong round. All right. Thanks, Sam. Chaos today at the state capitol when an Air Force veteran with fireworks strapped to his chest covered in gas ignited himself today. He was protesting poor treatment by the VA. Now, you can see the panic as the explosions interrupted a press conference sending authority scrambling to secure the area. Christy Ethers walks us through what happened and the questions we're working to answer tonight. John Watts is being treated here at Grady. We're told he was awake and talking before they transported him here. But one of the biggest mysteries left to solve has to do with the sign he left in his car. John Watts is the man seen here, sitting on the ground near the state capitol. Another angle shows him on a stretcher as paramedics rush him to Grady for treatment. He became the center of attention when a standard news conference erupted with sounds of explosions. Injuries. Turns out it was fireworks, Watts strapped to his body and doused with gasoline before setting himself on fire. GSP trooper Cantrell Cooley, who was at the Capitol by chance, saw the man engulfed in flames and grabbed the fire extinguisher out of his cruiser to put out the flames. The guy was fully involved in fire. I mean, from his head down to his feet. A bomb robot checked out Watts' car to make sure there were no more devices inside. And as far as we know, they didn't find anything else that would explode. But they did find this, a sign saying, call Stephanie, and a phone number attached. We don't know who Stephanie Lee is or why he said to call her, but we found an address for her. So we're heading out to Mableton to find out why. 45 minutes later, we pulled up to a nice brick house in a quiet suburban neighborhood. So this is Stephanie Lee's house. I'm going to go up to the door and knock on it and see if she answers. 
No one answered the door, but we left our card in case she wants to reach us. Police say Watts lit himself on fire because he was protesting poor treatment at the VA. When we reached out to the VA, they say they couldn't comment on the specific veteran's case because of patient privacy laws, but said they're ensuring he gets the VA care he needs. In Atlanta, Christy Etheridge, 11 Alive News. All right, time to catch you up on some of the other big stories today. Ron Jones is here with our speed feed. Yeah, that's right, Vinny. Tonight we're hearing the dramatic 911 call describing the chaotic aftermath when a tree fell on a young camper. Listen in. We have a tree that had fallen on a kid in a tent. He's not responding? No. Well, the victim was a 14-year-old boy scout, and it happened at Camp Burt Adams in Newton County. Elijah Knight of Cypress, Texas, was part of a large group of scouts visiting Metro Atlanta for a jamboree. Investigators say Elijah was trying to find shelter from an oncoming storm when the wind and the rain brought the tree down on top of his tent. His death has been ruled an accident. And take a look at this couple here, folks. Neil and Janet Farrell from Pickens County. They're accused of abusing their 18-year-old daughter. Now, these are pictures of their daughter Olivia's bedroom as well. Investigators say they often locked her inside for days or months at a time with limited chances to use the bathroom. The couple reported Olivia missing over the weekend, telling police she had behavioral issues and that her life was in danger. Well, she was found walking in a town about 20 miles away. Detectives say Olivia is now in a safe environment. Dozens of people coming out to protest the Supreme Court's decision upholding President Trump's travel ban. Demonstrators from the ACLU gathering outside the federal building in downtown Atlanta tonight, calling the ruling un-America. The court ruled President Trump acted within his authority when he ordered that ban. Five of the seven counties or, or countries on the list are predominantly Muslim. By the way, uh, Georgia Senator David Perdue released a statement tonight supporting the travel ban, saying it pr protects our homeland. 